Here we are in the Eclipse IDE looking at the sample code that I created for the week one assignment. You'll notice that I created a package called employees and a class called employee. Now remember, we're approaching data structures and algorithms from an object-oriented perspective by using Java in this course. So we're going to do some fundamental aspects of object-oriented programming, including objects themselves, properties, methods, and constructors in this assignment. You'll notice that within the employee class, I set a number of properties, beginning with a string for the employee name, and then double variables or properties for gross pay, hours worked, hourly rate, and so on and so forth. Some of these will be properties that we set and some of them will be properties that we calculate or compute by running methods on each object. Remember, we're going to create an instance of each employee object each time we create a new employee. So you need to think of an employee object as a person in the real world who has properties. They worked a number of hours, they worked for an hourly rate, they had a certain number of deductions, and so on and so forth. So we are going to treat each employee effectively as an employee object in our Java code. And each time we create a new employee, uh, we're actually instantiating a new uh, instance of the employee object. So the first thing that I do is I create a constructor. A constructor is essentially a method or a function that runs every time you create a new instance of an object. And we're going to pass uh, some parameters to that constructor that will be our initial values. We're going to pass the employee's name, the number of hours they worked, and their hourly rate. And here you'll see I set those properties to the parameters that were passed to the constructor. Now this might look a little redundant, but remember, uh, each employee object is going to have these properties, and we're just passing these values, these temporary values, into our constructor and setting the properties of the object accordingly. So we'll do the constructor first, and that will give us some initial values. And then we'll implement our first method, which is going to be calculate gross pay. Now the assignment instructions give you the formulas for calculating gross pay, including overtime. And I copied those into the comments here for you. And we'll simply employ an if block uh, as a conditional to see if the number of hours worked were greater than 40. And if so, we employ the formula for calculating overtime based on what was given to us in the assignment instructions. Otherwise, we calculate the gross pay simply as the hours worked times the hourly rate. And what this ends up doing is setting the gross pay, gross pay property per employee based on what we compute. So remember, we're going to have multiple instances of employees, each with their own gross pay property that will be computed when we execute the calculate gross pay method on each object. Then I put some comments in here for you. There are two methods that you need to uh, complete in order to uh, finish the assignment. You'll need to calculate uh, the employee deductions and you'll need to calculate net pay. And uh, these are uh, methods that you can uh, create based on the example that I gave you for the gross pay. Just follow the assignment instructions and you should be able to create those. So effectively you're going to calculate the deductions first and then you're going to calculate the net pay by subtracting the total deductions property from the gross pay property and then you can set the net pay property. The next block of code uh, of our employee object um, is the public static void main uh, block which will run upon execution of our code. And so here I'm going to instantiate a new employee object as EMP1 and I'm passing some values uh, to the constructor. So I'm passing the employee's name, the number of hours they worked, and their hourly rate. And, and below here I gave another way that you can do this, uh, but it's just as easy to pass those values in the constructor. Then we're going to run the calculate gross pay method and that will in turn set the gross pay property. And here I can use the system.out.println to print out the employee's gross pay. And you can see when I execute uh, or compile and execute this code, uh, it calculates the gross pay accordingly. 
So I hope this gives you a good start for this week's assignment and uh, allows you to get uh, up and running and experimenting with some of these object-oriented features of Java. I'll mention just two other quick things. First, you'll notice my uh, conventions on property names. It's usually lowercase, and then if it's two words, then you have the uppercase value or the uppercase uh, letter for the second word. This just happens to be a Java uh, syntax convention for creating um, variables. And uh, generally, I will mention that oftentimes names of classes are capitalized. I didn't do that in this case. Um, I'll leave that up to you if you want to do that. But it does sometimes make things easier to read if we know that uh, a class type is capitalized so that when we execute this code down here, um, this may be a capital E for employee. And then we know EMP1 is uh, an instance of that capital uh, employee object so that the capital E employee object is the a sort of definition of the employee and then everything with lowercase are instances of that class. So uh, take a look at this, experiment with it, and uh, give it your best attempt to uh, follow the assignment instructions for week one and uh, finish this code and uh, get it to run and compile correctly. As always, I'm here to help you and will do everything I can uh, to support you as you work through this course. Thank you very much.